Ted Bundy said goodbye to his family in Tacoma by phone Monday night, five hours before he was scheduled to die in Florida's electric chair. He called a little before 11 p.m. a call for which his mother and father had waited throughout the evening. We just want you to know how much we love you and always will, Louise Bundy said to her son after they had said their hellos. Mrs. Bundy's voice quivered with emotion as she talked to her son while her husband, John, sat with friends. You do the talking, he had told her. When the grandfather clock in the hall of the family's North End home chimed 11, about three minutes remained of the 10 minutes allowed by Florida prison authorities for the call. As she listened to her son, Mrs. Bundy wrote rapidly on a sheet of paper, taking messages from him for friends and loved ones. He sounds wonderful, Mrs. Bundy said when the call was finished. He sounds very much at peace with himself. He said, I'm so sorry I've given you all such grief. Part of me was hidden all the time. And then he said, but the Ted Bundy you knew also existed. Then the phone rang again, and John Bundy answered it. It's Ted again, he said. Their son had been able to make another call. He and his mother shared another precious 10 minutes before they had to say goodbye once again. We're all praying for you, she said. He said God's spirit was with him, Mrs. Bundy told her assembled friends. He kept saying how, sorry he was, that, there was another part of me that people didn't know. The Bundys had prepared earlier Monday evening for the death of their son, grieving, but calm with an assurance they would always love the boy they remember as, the light of our lives. The atmosphere at the Bundy home in the early evening was subdued, even though television crews had been busy setting up and taking down equipment, and visitors. Friends of the Bundys, were chatting. John Bundy talked quietly with friends as Mrs. Bundy answered the questions of reporters in a soft voice that bespoke her grief and the strength she has exhibited through. Out her 12-year ordeal we are surrounded by love in this house, she told a reporter who asked her how she managed to keep from breaking down in the face of her son's execution, which was scheduled for 4 a.m. PDT today. We have that and our faith in God. Mrs. Bundy said she hoped her son's new interest in religion was genuine and he would find forgiveness for his crimes in heaven. What he says he did, those are awful things, but I believe God forgives. She again expressed profound remorse for her son's victims and their families. I feel so very, very sorry for them, she said. I think of my own girls, and I feel such sadness. Only when asked whether she believed in the death penalty did her voice ring with anger. I think it's barbaric. She said what good does it do? It's legalized murder is all. It's not a deterrent. They've been killing people for thousands of years, in executions, and what good has it done? On the family piano a row of photos overlooked the scene in the tidy living room. Among the pictures was a row of faces of the Bundy's children. At the end of that row was the photo of a handsome teenage boy, a boy grown into the man Mrs. Bundy bade farewell with her final words at the end of the phone call. From him. You'll always be my precious son.